Hey guys, welcome to the Doghouse Podcast. Big time guest this week, first time on on the podcast. Four star offensive lineman, Under Armour All American, Mason Short from Evans, Georgia, as he talks about why he decommitted from Alabama, meeting Nick Saban and having a relationship with him, and he hints at his final four, who he's uh, leaning at committing to, also when he's gonna commit and make the big time decision and he also talks about his big time rival who he loves playing against be sure to like subscribe and share the podcast that really helps out got a great uh first time guest here mason short uh short uh big four-star recruit i believe he's uh top 200 in the nation under under armor all american offensive lineman from uh evans georgia He's got his uh, – we'll get into that, his final four for who he's going to commit to. How are we doing today, Mason? Doing great. How are you doing? Doing pretty well. Pre- really appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, Mason, I was able to get Mason on. Uh, my uh, nephew, uh, Bryce Walker, in Augusta, Georgia. Shout out to him. He plays lacrosse. He's uh, good friends with uh, Mason Short and was able to get him on today. So, hey, appreciate the uh, Bryce Walker shout out there. <laughs> yeah, so first of all, I want to ask you, so I know you're uh, – doing a lot of uh, recruiting visits and I'm sure a lot of the big time teams are after you. So I just wanted first off to see how the uh, recruiting process has been for you. I know you're a junior now, but I'm sure it's real stressful, but how's the, how's the recruiting process been? Uh, it's, it's been a blessing. I mean, I started getting recruiting recruited when I was uh, 15 years old. I mean, I was, a, I was a baby. I was, right. friend, I was a freshman. I mean, coming in eighth grade, uh, coming out of eighth grade, um, I started getting looks, I would say interest my eighth grade year. Oh. But uh that was just from camps at that time. I was a tight end in middle school. This is a funny story. Um Coach Luke, who used to be the coach at uh at UGA, the line coach, he he uh saw my tape from some kind of all-star game and invited me up there. And uh thinking I was gonna be with kids my age. Now mind you, I haven't gotten into a stance at an offensive tackle once in my life at this point. I was just catching footballs. So uh, I get to the camp, and I'm thinking I'm going to see some guys, you know, maybe eighth grade, seventh grade. Now I'm going against these five stars who are like 6'6", 270, got six packs. I'm like, what in the world? Right. That was a – that's really like the first instance. uh, This stuff's real. So if I want to – if this is something I want to continue in the future, I got to, you know, I got to get on this fast. I got to, you know, footwork, eating, training, sleep recovery, all that kind of stuff. That was like a very eye-opening experience. but. Uh, long story short, I got my butt whooped by them boys when I was like like 14 years old, and I, I mean I got addicted after that. Like just that feeling of, you know, having having the coach look at you, the whistle, you know, all that kind of stuff, and getting ready to go on a rep. So I got addicted to training, you know, just being perfecting my craft and all that kind of stuff. So after after that year, I bought out my freshman year. Um, I started getting major major looks. One of my first big offers was uh was Minnesota. And after that, Ohio, Ohio State um, hit me up after that. And then it was Georgia, Alabama, all the SEC schools. And it's it's been it's been very, very crazy, I would say, early on, because right. I've never experienced something like that ever in my life before. Um, uh, but it was, it was getting crazy at a point, and I kind of wanted to commit early. Mm-hmm. So it would kind of slow down a little bit. Um, looking back now, I wish I would have, um, like, oh, like, experience more before I committed but at that time I felt like Alabama was my home you know I love the coaches there and the relationships I had so I really didn't get to experience much of the recruiting stuff but I still got the phone calls and text messages and the home visit you know the school visits every single day to a point almost but uh now it's a lot more laid back you know you've got these relationships built for about three to four years some five I've right. known these coaches and players so instead of all the all the all the butt kissing and all that. It's just, right. you know, how's your wife? How's your kids doing? Did you catch any fish this weekend? Right. So now it's a lot it's a lot more laid back now, but it's still I'm getting probably about twenty phone calls a day. So Oh uh, sure. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm sure it gets exhausting. I did want to ask that um so so you were committed to Alabama. What led you to decommit? Was it because Nick Saving leaving? And then also your top four, which we can talk about Georgia, Ohio State, Clemson, and Kentucky. So what what made you decommit from Alabama? Um, originally, I thought it was a joke that Saban 
retired. Right. I was uh, I was training some boys over at my my training facility, and one of the parents uh, tapped me on the shoulder and showed me a ESPN report that Saban's retiring. I'm like, yeah, you're funny. And about five minutes later, I got a call from my mama, and I was like, oh yeah, this is probably real. And then she told me that it was retiring. And at that point, I really wasn't really didn't know what to do. And uh, so I called some of the because at that time the 24 signees that was their first weekend moving into Alabama. They've only been there a week if you were a 24 and signed to Alabama. And so I called uh, Casey Poe and uh, a lineman up there in Alabama who I'm very good friends with, and uh, kind of just got his view on everything like what's it like right now. And uh, after I got some insight on what's going on and everything, I, I wasn't going to decommit then. But then after a couple weeks later, I found out that my offensive line coach um, was fired and went was open for another job. And after that, you know, it was, it was like a waterfall effect. So you got the O-line coach, my area recruiter, the recruiting analyst, everyone I know, they're gone. So af- after I found that out, I was just thinking, all right, let me step back and reopen my recruitment. Um, and then shortly after, after Coach DeBoer was hired, he uh, – he was very quick to reach out to me. He had, of course, he had his affairs to get to first. You know, you move from Seattle to Alabama, that's a big difference, oh, yeah. especially getting your family and everything in, in check. So I, I knew I wasn't going to be one of the players like, hey, I want you to offer me the first day, the first second you get hired. You know, I knew that, that took time to get settled in. But eventually he came by the school um, with him and the Coach Huff, the O-line coach at the time. Which he is now at the Seattle Seahawks, so he didn't. He wasn't there for much, much time. Right. But uh, the relationships I, I've built now and in, in in the past couple months with the new staff has been great. Um, they they even not stopped recruiting me, especially since I decommitted. Uh, but it's it's been it's been a it's been crazy. I'm just glad it happened to me now, when I'm still in high school of all that happening. Exactly. So I don't have to experience all the changes, you know, as a signee, you can't go nowhere. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, you know, changes happen in real life. You can't do not much about it. That's just life for you. So, yeah, yeah but it's been uh, it, it's been pretty crazy. And they, they're still actively recruiting me today. Okay. Um, you know, uh, they actually just hired the Michigan State offensive line coach, and he had me up a couple of days ago. Um, so I'm still continuing – to building these new relationships. It's still, it's still Tuscaloosa. It's still a, a great place, you know, but the people make the place. So now I just got to learn those people, and get a feel for them. So, I mean, realistically, it's just letting my decision was uh, my O-line coach leaving probably. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure you, that, that's who you're going to play for. And, and that was a really, uh, you know, intimate relationship. So, yeah, like I said, been a big deal. Then also since Nick Saban left, did you actually get to meet Coach Saban? And, and what would you think about him and everything? Oh yeah, um, I, I've met him a plenty of times. Um, okay. The first, the first time, it, it was, you know, it, it's crazy. It's like something you dream of. Like I was like, I was 15 years old meeting the greatest coach of all time, right. and uh, getting to shake his hand was an honor and everything. And then it's it's the first visit, the second visit. Hey, coach, how you doing? It's the same thing, and like you're on your fourth, fifth, sixth. Say, what's up, coach? You walking by the hallway, and he'll he'll dap you up and everything like that. Right. He he's got a he's got a a professional personality for the media, sure. but when you're talking to him one on one and just in the hallway, it's you know, hey, what's up, coach? How you doing? You know, um, how how you been? It's been uh, it, it's been great. It's it's really it's always professional, but it's once you get to know these coaches a lot more, it becomes very personal. You know, their family, you be around their family a lot. Um, they spend a lot of their time with you, so it's it's been like. I don't want to say talking to my uncle, but it was, you know, it's pretty cool talking to him, like really relaxed. So, yeah. Yeah. Like I say, I'm a Georgia fan, but always respected the man. Seven national titles. He's the GOAT. So, yeah, I'm sure that was great. You got to uh, be able to meet him and everything. Yes, in sir. The relationship. Yeah. Before we get into uh, Mason's uh, top, for his final four for his uh, picks, going to get a shout out to uh, Viva Tequila Seltzer.com. Live life, live it up. Uh, zero carbs, zero sugar, 88 calories. To get my uh, personal favorite is the watermelon. Great on the uh, – could be pool season before we know it on the golf course. But uh, for 20% off Doghouse 20, again, that's 20% off Doghouse 20, Viva Tequila Seltzer.com. Also check them out on uh, IG and all the other uh, social media. 
And then jumping right into it, looks like uh, right here from your IG was posted that your final four is going to be Georgia, Ohio State, Clemson, and Kentucky. I did see that you've been spending a lot of time with uh, Coach Sweeney, Davo Sweeney, and Clemson playing a little golf and everything. So I just wanted to see. Yes, sir. What? How about uh, you know, I have to give a pick. I know that's still a big one, but what, what do you like about each school and maybe some of the relationships you built? Uh, I, I'll kind of go at random. Um, I'll I'll start off with uh with Georgia. Um, they they started recruiting me my freshman year. Um, I got I got to to build those relationships. You know, really good, especially they're right down the road from me. It's about an hour and a half, two hour drive. Right. And uh. I've been to many a camps with up up there, just uh, just day visits to go hang out with them, watch practice. But uh, one thing I really like about Coach Smart is uh, his, you know, he like I said earlier, he's like a like a glass window. You can just look through him, ask him anything, and tell you. There's nothing. He's nothing. He's not keeping back anything. You know, he's going to be truthful with, with you. And so after uh, I got to sit and meet with him and watch watch some film, watch some camps with him. Because uh, my freshman year, I went up there to watch a camp with them. I actually had an, inj an injury that really wasn't worth just going to camp and re-injuring it again. So I get uh, we watched we watched my team do seven on seven, and uh, sitting in his office, he has this huge glass one to look out in the field. Um, you know, I've talked with him. I mean, we talk probably twice a week at this point on the phone, and uh, with with Coach Sarrells. I mean, I always go. I always go by this this eighty twenty rule. Eighty percent the O line coach, twenty percent the head coach, right. because you're gonna spend eighty percent of your time with the O line coach. That's the guy teaching you, developing all that, and then all of the personal meetings and the other stuff is is the head coach, the other twenty percent. So a huge thing with my interest in Georgia was Coach Sarrells and his way of coaching, his track record of. All, all the linemen he's put in the NFL, his way of developing. I love the way he coaches. It's awesome. You know, they, they get after it and everything. But he's also a big hunter and fisherman, so we share some pictures of some bucks and bass we've caught and killed in the past. So right. that's, what I, that's what I love about Georgia. I mean, especially they've they've drilled into my head, like, you're an idiot if you don't go to Georgia. You know, like, it's right down the road, your backyard. Right. Your mama gets to come see you every weekend, you know, all that kind of stuff. We got plenty of fishing holes, hunting spots. Um, that's and they, they've been recruiting me for years now. Same thing I said earlier. At this point, it's just how's your family doing? How's your kids? How's life been treating you? And uh, that's that's really the main thing with Georgia. They just they want me there really bad. You know, Coach Coach Smart came by, saw me on his helicopter. The uh, I think maybe a month ago at this point. Yeah, it was right um, after the decommitment from Alabama. I think he was there like the next day or something, right? He was there the day of. There. Uh, yeah. I think he committed at um, 10 a.m., I'm pretty sure. Right. And uh, he was there about three hours later. <laughs> he was coming. But, <laughs> but I, I don't think people understand that we had that planned. But it looked to the to the Georgia's eye, Georgia fans, I guess, up to a point where right. and this is three-hour difference. He got in that helicopter and ride right over there. But uh, right. I, thought, I thought it was awesome. You know, I always grow up, me and my brother joking around, like, playing around in the yard, you know, like one day we'll have like, you know, Coach Coach Smart, Coach Saban come fly his helicopter in that field to come watch you play. And then once you like hear the helicopter blades coming and actually see him come and land to watch you, we I mean, just come meet you. It's like, dude, this is what you talk about as kids. You know, so it's like it's getting real. I'm at to a point now where it's about eight months I'll be in college. You know, eight months I'll be repping whatever jersey I'm going to be repping and going through winter conditioning, spring ball. And after that, it's real. It's just football from there on out. So that's one of the big things I like with Georgia. Um, Clemson, I uh, love Coach Luke. Again, like I've, I've talked to him since I've been in eighth grade, very short time. But uh, I met I met him here and there while he was retired throughout some places um, to, like, catch up a little bit. Right. Um, but when he got the hire at Clemson, I really – I got really excited. Because Clemson has this rule where they can't really talk to uh, like under underclassmen, right. so you have to be a junior and a full uh, high school transcript, hmm. and you have to have a certain GPA and all this kind of stuff. They they recruit very strict, I guess you could say. 
And uh, once once Coach Luke went to um to Clemson, I got really excited. I've been to a couple games prior. I like I liked the O-line coach before, but I knew I really, really liked Coach Luke. And so uh, I went on a, uh, a junior day visit, which was my first and also Coach Luke's first. So when we were walking around the facility, he was asking people where stuff is, you know, because it's his, it's his first time there too. But he's, uh, I, you know, they do a lot of uh, player panels where the coaches will leave the room and have the players talk. So there's no, I'm going to say this because my coach is looking at me. It's all real. It's all real player feedback. So I have to get it, sit down and, and uh, kind of hear where them guys uh, feed off of him after, you know, knowing him for just the bowl, bowl prep practice. That's it. And uh, they said they love me. He coaches with energy, with heart, especially in the film room. He's very active. He's not just going to sit down and do the laser pointer and, and do all this kind of stuff. But uh, especially Coach Sweeney, the media gives him a very, very bad look because he don't talk to reporters, none of that. He don't he don't give him nothing to feed off of. Right. So uh, he uh, he get he gets a very bad image at some points. And once I got to meet him in real life, I like, man, this is one of the most down to earth men I've ever talked to in my life. I mean, he's a man of Christ. He walks a, a great path of faith, right. which I really appreciate. Which is a big thing in my recruitment. Um, after just getting to sit down and talk with him, I was like, man, this guy, this guy's awesome. He's real. Right. We also got to go eat dinner at his house, hmm. which was real too. Every door was unlocked. His kids, his kids' shoes were at his front door. Nothing was fake. Right. Everything that was there, I could have go see and did. So uh, after that, I really love Clemson, and then uh, I, I'm gonna have an OV there soon, probably this summer. And then uh, going on to Ohio State, they uh, they were actually probably my first like really really big offer. Hmm. Um, and then after I went up there my my freshman year as well. Funny story with that is. We do all the facility tour. Uh, we go through all these meetings with the coaches and players, get to see everything. And then we finally get into a uh, a meeting with Coach Day. And uh, usually the head coach would be the one to offer you. Mm-hmm. And so at this point, my biggest offer was, I think, was Minnesota. Um, and then, you know, I'm not I'm not expecting much, really. I kind of think they just kind of wanted me up there on a, just to get an experience for it. <laughs> and then uh, – Meeting went great. The, the with the O line coach went great with Coach Fry, and then uh, we go to the meeting. Fast forward about thirty minutes, and we're getting up to leave. And my mama, my mom was with me on the trip. My man, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't offer. And then uh, after that, Coach Day called me back into his uh, his office. Said, "Hey man, I just got a text that I was supposed to offer you, because." Uh, the O line coach um, saw me walking out, and he said uh, he forgot to relay that to him. So that was a really cool experience. Um, I got to talk with Coach Fry a lot. He's a great coach. He's developed a lot of men to be good and great in, in the NFL. Um, with Paris Johnson, you know he's a he's a dog. He's been he's been that way since high school. Right. Um, I got I got to speak with him because he got to experience all the crazy recruiting like I'm going through right now. He's just been a part of it, and he's now away from it. So I got to speak to him, see how to handle a lot of things, which was which was great. Um, but I, I'm loving Ohio State. One thing is just a little cold up there. I'm a, I'm a boy from the south, so oh, yeah. I'm not long way lo- long way from home too. Long way from home, plane tickets, and everything. But again, I just I just want to be. I, that's not that's nothing for me really because yeah. you know they they're going to offer me a scholarship to go there and you know ball out, play football. At the end of the day, with this new dawn of NIL, I'll be able to have my parents come up um, with all that kind of stuff. And uh, just a, it's, a, it's a factor of, you know, you get to the NFL, what's going to happen when you get drafted by Green Bay, getting paid all those million dollars, we're going to say no because right. it's cold. Oh, yeah. You know, so. Um, and, then, uh, and then Kentucky, which threw a lot of people off. A lot of people got thrown off by that. Right. Um, I, I Prior – they came by to my school and offered me my freshman year. And at the time, I liked the coach, but I, I just really wasn't thinking too much of Kentucky at the time because I was getting recruited by a lot of these big SEC schools close to home. And then uh, Coach Wolf was previously previously there a couple of years ago, and uh, he actually recently got hired by Kentucky. So he's the offensive line coach at Kentucky now. So when I found that out, 
I got a call the day he signed the papers. I was the first person he offered as the offensive line position at Kentucky. And I've known Coach Wolf for five years now. Um, and so it was, it was the kind of thing where I, I know what he does aside from being a part of Alabama, of what he does as a person and a coach and how he can develop. I've sat through the meetings. I've seen him teach. I committed to that man. I know what I wanted as a coach. And so uh, once he went to Kentucky, it did some talking with the staff there, the coaches, some of the players. Um, did a lot more research in Kentucky. Like, I haven't done it before. Um, so I had to learn more about the place and everything. And so I included them in my top four, uh, which uh, threw off a lot of people. I got a lot of questions about it. So I guess when people look back this, look at this now and understand why. So, yeah, it's – it's been, it's just been, I mean, aside from all that, it's just been a blessing to be in this to be in this position, you know, because this stuff gets stressful, oh, yeah. real, real stressful. You're 14, 15 years old, getting all these calls from these coaches. You got to worry about being a teenager. I mean, having you know, going home, having fun, have, have a girlfriend, relationship, all that stuff. You know, to be a kid, oh, yeah. and you got all these big responsibilities. So it gets crazy. But having having God in my life has, has helped me a lot. A lot of praying, a lot of that stuff. and uh, So it, all this stuff's a really big blessing. That's awesome here. It sounds like it's been a great uh, journey for you. Great. Um, great time. Well, with all that said, when do you think you'll actually make, like I said, you don't have to give any hints on here. Perfect. When do you think you'll actually make make a uh, make a decision or your decision in mind? I don't have an exact date in mind, but I have a very close time frame. I will be – I'm committing before the season. Okay. Not necessarily next week or next month, but probably once I get through my workouts with my guys, take my OVs in this summer, which will all be in June. I think uh, about every weekend in June is scheduled for an OV. And uh, probably a couple of days after I'm done with all my OVs, I'm going to announce. Because I don't want the distractions from my oh, – it's not just my high school career. It's the teammates I've been with since, since Pee Wee football. You know, I've known them and everything, all their families. So I don't want to take away from having these coaches come by during practice and everything, taking away from their time in their high school, you know, senior year. Right. So it, especially I don't want the distractions of all the recruiting, phone calls. You know, I got film to watch. I got to recover. I got to go to bed at 8 p.m. Right. and all that kind of stuff. So def, definitely before the season. I'm just not sure when, though. Okay, gotcha. And then do you think it's going to be, bam, like you're going to tweet it out, make a video, big thing about it, or have, have you thought about it? You only get to do it once. Uh, I'm probably going I'm probably going to do the, do the hats. Recently, okay. I, I actually saw something. I'm not sure. You might know more about this, that they're going to move the national signing day a couple more weeks up to December, right. which that would allow – because I think originally you had to – you can – uh. You can commit, put the hat on. Let's say you go to that college. You spend one night there, then you can sign at the college. Right. So prior, you just put a hat on and then sign after that. So now I think I'll be able to sign as an early enrollee in right. December because I'm doing all my senior classes right now in uh, high school. So next year I have like two or three classes, which thank God. Right. I had I couldn't do econ much more longer. So there you go. Um, <laughs> Uh yeah, I I want to do a video. I've always wanted to do a video. Um, if I were, I want to do it uh in Louisville more than duck hunting. Okay. I already know how I'm going to do it though. I don't I don't want to give too much out, but I, if I were to do a video, it would be duck hunting. Okay. I, I know it's in, it's in my head. I just don't know how to relay it out there, but right. I'm probably I'm probably going to uh, have my whole school you know in the gym probably and, and select the hats because. I have a lot of people who impacted me locally here in my community. I want them to be a part of it. You know, I, I, owe, I owe a lot of a lot of people thanks and gratitude. So I would love to take that time to, you know, hold the microphone and thank them personally while they're there. So that's, awesome. that, that's, that's probably how I'm going to do it. That's great. Great to hear. And then I did, I did have to ask, because I know it's very important these days, but how much will NIL take part in your decision for your commitment? I know it's a lot of stuff going on. It's a lot of – a lot of smoke and mirrors, but yeah, I just wanted to ask: is that a, is that a is it more of the relationships, or is it? I know this helps, but the NIL a big part of it. It's it's a it's a crazy time to be a part of college football. You know, it's a new dawn of college football. But personally, 
I will never go to a coach and say, this is my price tag. You give me this much money in my bank account, I'm committing. It has not happened with me. Um, I, I come from humble beginnings. I, I understand I was getting recruited before all this NIL stuff, and I, and I wanted to play for a team without getting a million dollars in my bank. I just wanted to do it and be a part of a program and go be great in the NFL, which a lot of people need to start with. Especially recruits need to be worrying about the NFL instead of NIL, you know. Um, and that's that's kind of my whole thought process is to worry about the NFL first, go to a program that can develop you into something great, and then you can get your millions there. Of course, I would love. It's just it's a part of college football now. You can't really deny it. You know, it, it's it's money you can use to help your family. Uh, you know, you're getting a, a very expensive scholarship to start off with. Um, so that that's awesome. But the NIL is kind of just like a cherry on the top mm. you know on, on top of all the cherries they already give you so uh yeah it's not something i'm a recruiting tactic that i use right. and i relay that to all these coaches so i don't want to be put in the awkward situation to in a meeting get this much price tag number and i'm not going to do anything with it because that's not how i operate right. and and these coaches understand that now you know they they don't that's not their first instinct to do it with somebody but it's somebody they really want, really talented, you know, once in a lifetime kind of player. I, I guess they'll do it, but um, that's just not something I'm I'm with. So I would love, I would love to in the future, you know, take care of my mom. That's my ultimate goal is to retire her. Mm-hmm. But it, you know, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get mine when I get to college. I, I know that. I just gotta people who are getting all this money and expecting to get this was this much money, and you haven't even been through a winter conditioning program yet or spring ball. You haven't even laced it up yet to go hit somebody, and you got five hundred grand or two hundred grand in your bank account. You just, I feel like you got to prove yourself first. But I mean, it's at the end of the day, you know, take advantage of it. You're given to it, so take advantage of it. So, right. I do like that you you want to play, commit to the school, commit to your opportunity, and then, like you said, it's kind of icing on top. I like that. It's not just hey, here here the highest bidder is. I like that. Yes, sir. And then uh, what, what's been the most important for a school with, with your parents? What do they really like for you to focus on or what do they want to really see with your regarding your parents? Uh, my, my parents, they, they've supported me tremendously throughout this whole thing, but they uh, they're really looking for, you know, uh, something that's real, nothing that's that you can tell. You know, this is this is a, a scripted scene. You know, let's have let's let us let us have this roll out when they walk by this door. You know, this all this kind of stuff. They want something that's real interactions. I'll get developed to be a great NFL player, go to the NFL, get my education, get a degree, and have something that you know. I can, if at the end of the day, I sign my papers and I get a damn. Sorry, I didn't mean the curse, but I get a career earning injury. Thank you, man. It's the internet. <laughs> I, get a, I get a career earning in, injury, and I want to have you know, a support system, you know, at the end of the day, you're a football player, but we're also a human being. And uh, that's, that's one of their big things is having like something to fall back on, you know, because some days you're going to have your off days. Everyone has off days at every single profe- profession, even to the present, everyone has their off days and they want to know that I'll be taken care of once those days come. So that's their big thing. That's awesome. Great to hear. And then um, on, on a side note, just kind of ask you uh, from all the recruiting stuff, so what's what's been your favorite game or rival team that you've played in your high school career? Oh, gosh. Probably uh, – oh, man. It had been probably my last – my last game of the year last year. Either that or uh, South Effingham. Them boys are probably going to get a hold of this podcast and use it against me next year. I don't care. I'll put them in the dirt again. But uh, – <laughs> South Effingham. Yeah. Okay. I figured it might have been Lakeside. I think my nephew always mentioned that was a big rival. There, right? Oh, oh, trust me. Yeah. But personally, that that's that's going that's inevitable for the game. There's gonna be some jawing. You know, Lakeside right. was was stomping on our logo, but it's all right. We came home with a dub and they went home crying. So, you know, we didn't care. Right. But uh personally, from from my experience, Soham did some some stuff they shouldn't have done, which I won't mention <laughs> on social media. Um and uh which impacted the person, which was done really bad, and I didn't appreciate it. You know, there's no room for that. In the day, it's football. And uh, I'll send you the clip, but first, that going to play the game, 
it's running the ball on my side, and I drive that freaking linebacker 15 yards down the field and dump him and then wave at the student section. Right. And, uh, you know, that's that was personally one of my favorite plays. And then uh, pro- Lakeside, I, I love, you know, all the old, we always we, – we beat Greenbrier every year. They can't say nothing. So, you know, it's, that's been – Rooted in, in this area since my dad's been in high school and his dad went to high school. That's how it will be and should forever be. So, I mean, we're known as the blue collar school. So, right. you know, we, we got guys driving banged up pickup trucks to school while they got the squatted Chevy, the 22, I mean, 2020 Chevys squatted to the ground, all that kind of stuff. While right. we got the blue collar boys. But yeah, I mean, it's, and this brings more joy into the community once you have all these local rivalries, you know. At the end of the day, it's just it's just it's just a game. So, All right. gotcha. Thanks, thanks for sharing that. And then with your uh, your off season coming up, and I spring practice and everything, is there an aspect of the game that you're focusing on? And what would you like to improve this off season and, and for your senior year? Uh, I feel like uh, last year I improved tremendously from my sophomore year. I took it a lot more serious of my recovery. Um, I I. Had, I missed a couple of games my freshman year and sophomore year. Um, I was I was doing I was doing all the training and all that stuff, but uh, you know, I wasn't doing the recovery process and all that kind of stuff. I was cramping up and everything. But once I you get like knowledge of the game, just not the game, but the training aspects, you you're just everything. It seems so much easier. You get in the film room, you understand these calls, you understand the playbook. You know, you go into the film room and you already have a message in your head what you're going to say to your coach. You know, you don't want to be the guy in the film room that hasn't watched it yet. Um, and uh, last year I felt like I was very quick off the ball. My, my game sense was was very, very good and quick. I made really good decisions. I wasn't making irrational decisions, selfless decisions, something that would look good on, on tape, but that would hurt my team. But – uh. You know, get getting to know you get you get in that um that two point saints. You got somebody walk down. You know what call to give. Just uh en- enhancing your your IQ of the game, and especially it's going to be like this every year. You know, training the weight room. That's that's honestly where it begins. And uh, my numbers have been tremendous since I've started training, and uh, taking recovery more serious. I train two times a day. I go to bed at eight thirty every single night. I would train five days a week, two times. I'll go at uh at my gym here uh, at five thirty in the morning. Oh. I'll get about an hour of really intense um cardio and explosive work, a lot of stretching, yoga. In the afternoon, I'll go lift heavy at my school. And honestly, sometimes you can call it a third workout, but it's just really fun. I do shot put and disc. But uh, yeah, that's that's kind of what my off season right now is. We're going to be starting the, the team aspects of stuff like the spring ball, you know, winter conditioning, all that kind of stuff in a couple of weeks. But uh, as of now, it's just, you know, after this season, I'm gone. You know, once this, this December hits, right. one of the last games of the year, that that week leading up that Friday, I mean, I'll be going to college. So right now I'm just trying to build myself up to a point where I can get developed a lot earlier. Some of these guys, you know, start earlier. Right. But, uh, yeah, I mean, my body feels great at 100%. I'm just so ready to put these pads on. I'm tired of these camps and all this kind of stuff. I just want to hit. So. Oh, oh, sure. And then uh, with you being, I, know, I got you six foot five, like 310. Do you think when you get to college, maybe freshman, you'll get on the nu- nutrition and the weight and the uh, weight training program? Do you think they want you maybe like 330, 340, somewhere around in there? Because you do have a big frame. Well, I don't think – well, a lot of people understand there's a – you think of you know an SEC lineman, you can be like like six, like six five, six six, and about like three forty, three fifty. Mm-hmm. That's like your prototypical build. But what a big thing that the colleges do that every single successful program has done is look at body composition. Mm-hmm. This is the thing I go back to is just learning like everything about this game you can possibly do. So you can be three hundred and sixty pounds and run a five flat. And but if you're not under that 25% body fat composition, they want you, they want you down. Let's say you're let's say you're 315, for instance, and you're 30% body fat, they're gonna cut you down to whatever that body fat percentage is and then build you up from that to lean muscle. So I I've personally done this 
um, getting a, like a DEXA scan. Right now I'm at 26%. I got one more percent to go until I'm in that, the, uh, the column for what they want to be in. But right now I weighed in at the doctor the other day, actually at 6'6", 315, oh. 312, I apologize. Um, and then uh, I got a DEXA scale on my body composition, which is 26%. But that's a big thing. It gets expensive eating healthy here. So and I'm just a right. high school, I'm a broke high school athlete. Right. Um, so once I get to college and all that kind of stuff, and I get the resources they have to provide for me, I just can't wait. So I, I can't wait to be in that weight room and become a monster. So oh, yeah. That's great. And then uh Mason, well, we know well, I know partially me. I know where I want you to go, but uh, uh wish you all <laughs> the luck and uh I know you got a big decision coming up. How do we uh follow you on uh social media? I got uh this all right to share this. Got your uh Got your Instagram and your IG here. Also, so yes, we got a big following on uh on on X as well. Yes, sir. Uh, I think I think let me look at my phone real quick. I think it's the uh on X is the same thing. It's it's just Mason Short underscore capital M capital S. Um, and I don't really don't do none of them TikToks. I don't do really like them get ready with them, all that kind of stuff. So right, all the recruiting based stuff and personalized stuff is uh it's probably on Instagram and everything, but. If y'all want to see me catch some big fish and cook yeah. some nice steak, go to Instagram. That's that's the place to be. That's right. Yeah, sorry, big uh, big fisherman, and then uh, been playing a little golf. What's your uh, what's your personal <laughs> best on the 18? If, so far. Oh well, I've tried. I need to, but every single time you start 18 holes with your buddies, it, it becomes a you're keeping score throughout this whole thing, and then you get right. to like let's say hole seven, hole ten, you're just goofing around, but. Uh, actually, I've gotten a lot better at it. Um, you know, you got to prioritize school and lifting and training, but I'll squeeze in some, some driving range sessions in there and everything. But, uh, we shot a 71 at our local golf course here as a, as a three man scramble, but we used every single one of my chips and probably I say 50% of my drives, which I can put that thing out there, but it might not be straight, right. but once I get go. lucky. Once I get lucky, you'll get out there. But yeah, that I love golf. It's just also a great escape from everything. Oh, yeah. You know, you're not thinking about. I put my phone on on do not disturb and put it in the cart or put it yeah. in my bag and shut it off and just enjoy about three or four hours with my buddies. So I ain't got to worry about nothing. And once I'm uh, about six balls in the woods, a couple balls in the waters away, I'll open my phone back up and get back at it. But yeah, it's it's a great escape for me. That's great. That's great. Just playing golf and, and going hunting and everything, good stress relievers. That's great. Enjoying yes, uh, your high school and being a kid, you know? Yes, sir. That's what it's all about. That's right. All right. Well, I really appreciate you uh, you coming on. And um, if everybody's still around, make sure to like, subscribe, and share the Doghouse podcast. And everybody check out Mason Short on uh, Instagram and on his ex and Twitter. Yes, sir. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, appreciate it. Go dogs, And uh, hope you have a good night. Yes, sir. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.